this is this is this is Welcome to a brand new episode of the podcast, 429, kicking it off right now. Um, it's a voicemail episode. We're going to get right to it. But first, mxpeaks.com, we're coming to town if you're in Chicago or Milwaukee. So Friday, November 18th at House of Blues Chicago, and then Saturday night in Milwaukee, Milwaukee. We're going to be doing um, the rave, November 19th. Tickets are on sale right now, mxpeaks.com. Uh, thanks to everybody that's bought tickets. A lot of people are going. Thank you. Can't wait for it. Um, I, I'm a little under the weather, you know. Uh, I have some sniffles. I'm at the end of it, though. I feel like I'm, I'm bouncing back pretty quick. It's just been a couple days. So um, wish me good health, people. Wish me good health. I appreciate you guys. Uh, if you want to call in, leave a message, be part of the podcast, call me, leave me a message, give me a, a question of course you could ask me about mxpx about me about whatever maybe you have a topic a genre a thing you want me to talk about i'd love to to try so call me at 360-830-6660 that's 1-360-830-6660 leave me a message we'll get to it um speaking of messages i'm gonna hear from you right now let's get to it here is the first voicemail. Hi, Mike. Uh, this is Luke calling from Minneapolis. I've been a long-term fan. I think I've seen you guys like seven or eight times uh, ever since the early 2000s. You were one of the first concerts I ever went to with one of my older brothers. Questions I want to ask, and I'll try to make it quick. Um, so first question I have is I've recently gotten into collecting vinyl. I feel like a lot of people have. Um, and I, I got the box set and I was able to online get at the show and the Renaissance EP stuff that hasn't been out for a while. But to my knowledge, I don't think Let It Happen has ever been put out on vinyl. So I'm curious if there's any plans that that might come out on vinyl someday. So if, if not, just a suggestion. Uh, the second question I have is when I was just getting into music in the early 2000s and late 90s, file sharing was really rampant. And one of the things that I remember seeing everywhere was that MXPX did a punk cover of Barbie Girl, which mm -hmm. listening to the song, I know that's not actually accurate. It's done by the band Homegrown. And so I'm curious if you have any funny stories about that. I'm assuming you've seen that there's uh, if you go on YouTube, you can see like MXPX Barbie Girl when you guys never did that song. So I'm just curious if there's any funny stories about that or if you've even met the guys from Homegrown and have talked about that. And then uh, final question I have is uh, I'm curious to know if there's any bands since you've had such a long career that when you like first met them, like you just didn't get along. But now over the years, you've, you've kind of become good friends and whether that's maybe like a band you were intimidated by or maybe a band that you, you know, didn't start out on good terms, but now, like, you'd consider good friends. I know the, the punk scene, a lot of times there, there's arguments about, oh, who's punk enough for 90s punk isn't the real punk. It's not like the 70s or 2000s pop punk isn't like 90s punk. And so I know there's sometimes there's a lot of gatekeeping, but I'm curious if <clears throat> you ever, like, had a situation with a band where, um, you know, at first you, you didn't get along, but now you, you say that they're, they're good friends that you like to connect with and do shows with. Uh, anyway, thanks for uh, putting out great music. Bye. All right, Luke. Thanks for calling. Um, let's get to it. Vinyl. Let it happen. No, never been released. You're correct. Um, wouldn't be a bad idea. I think, I think honestly, like, I don't know. I think it would be more likely that we would we would repress other things, um, more popular records. But um, the reason that record was popular was because it was so cheap. It was literally like it was like less than ten dollars for thirty two songs. And wow, yeah, that was that was definitely like undercutting a little bit. You know, when we released slowly going the way of the Buffalo about a month before. Tooth and Nail released Let It Happen. That really that really put a damper on on our career a little bit. Uh, but hey, happy to be where I'm at now. Everything's cool. It's just weird things like that. Um, but vinyl, yeah, sure, maybe someday, maybe someday we'll do it. Uh, honestly, I don't have I don't have any anything against 
uh, the actual songs and, and all that. Of course, uh, you know, I always say those songs were not meant to be heard by people. They were demos. They weren't finished. They were, and everybody's like, oh, I love them though so much, this, that, or whatever. Like, that's cool. I don't mind. I, I love that people love those, those recordings and stuff. Doesn't change the fact that it was, it was like, uh, it was like um, somebody going into your personal diary and taking things, taking like your, your diary entry about a crush you have on some girl or guy or whatever. And reading that to the class, you know, it's just like, come on, like, ugh. anyway, puts a bad taste in my mouth. But, um, but uh, I really love this. I, we still always, not always, we'll throw it into the set from time to time, but we'll throw things from that album. Um, Let It Happen being, you know, the title track. That's a big one. Um, our, also, over the last couple of years, we've done um, Never Learn. That is a fun song to do. And we did it, um, I think, the very first Between This World and the Next uh, show on the Internet that we were doing. So the very first round we did we played that song and it was like the first song we played and it was like nobody expected us to play that and it blew everybody's mind. So yeah, you know, those songs are, uh, you know, they hold true a lot, a lot of those songs, maybe not every single song on there, but, um, a lot of them do. All right. Next part to your question was Barbie girl. Yeah, you got it right. Um, not us. And that was around the time of Napster, LimeWire, things like that. So somebody uploaded Homegrown's Barbie Girl cover and they th must have thought it was MXPX, so they put MXPX on there. And so when anybody would get that, and that song was kind of a cult a classic. It was a hit song, um, aside from being, you know, Barbie Girl being a hit song, but just the cover itself, the Homegrown cover was, was a huge hit and people loved it and, and it was everywhere. And there was also like an ABBA cover, I feel like, but, but yes, we were friends with Homegrown. They toured with us a few times. We played a bunch of shows together back in the day and uh, we always thought it was funny, but I don't, I, I, I'm pretty sure we toured with Homegrown before the Napster thing happened. So it was like, we had, we were already friends by the time that happened. And uh, we didn't really understand what was going on until, until we like figured out what Napster was. It was like, oh, okay, or you know, LimeWire. It's like file sharing. Okay, I don't understand it. I still don't really understand it. But, <laughs> but yeah, that's when we found out about the the Barbie Girl thing, and and uh, it's just a funny, a funny little thing that happened. I'm sure, I'm sure there's other other things like that that happened over the years, you know, with Napster being, you know, mislabeling artists and things like that. But there was another song. I you know, This is what I think. I think because we had put out a cover album on the cover and bands weren't really putting out cover. Like that was sort of, uh, bands had done plenty of covers. Bands do plenty of covers, had done plenty of covers. That wasn't a new thing. But I really feel like a punk band doing a cover album was was new when MXPX did it. And I think because of that, any cover that came out that sounded remotely punky and like MXPX, people just assumed, oh, it must be MXPX. They're, they do a cover album, you know? So um, we got labeled uh, Popeye the Sailor Man by Face to Face was labeled MXPX for a while. Um, of course, Barbie Girl. There was an ABBA song. Um, a few other things. But, yeah, interesting. It, fun times, fun times, fun memories. All right, next part of your question. Are there any bands that we did not get along with at first and now are good friends? Or maybe we're intimidated by or... Um, not really. Uh, I'm trying to think of, of, I mean, there's probably some bands that didn't like us based on, on, you know, their own personal uh, prejudices. But um, usually when we would end up meeting any of these bands, um, they, they'd end up being really cool. So I'm trying to think of, um, you know, I think... 
I think uh, there was a band, uh, Friends of Rom. They didn't like us. They didn't want to tour with us. And they, we were on a tour or uh, going to be on a tour with them early, early days. And they, they basically were like, no, we don't want MXPX on this tour. And later on, you know, we ended up meeting them. And they're like, you guys are great. You know, I'm really sorry we, <laughs> we kind of prejudged you a bit. And, um, so, I mean, that happens here and there. I think with bad religion, you know, uh, we were very intimidated by them. We toured with them in Europe in 1997 and it was our first European tour, like our first full European tour. So we were just little kids really just taking it all in, trying to learn the ropes. And, uh, you know, the crew was really great to us. The band was actually great to us. I mean, they, we, they were so much nicer to us than we thought they were, if that makes sense. So we were just kind of expecting to be treated badly, kind of just like, you know, we're kids, we're whatever. But it's funny because it's like, well, why would they bring us on tour if they didn't like us, you know? The, so it's things can get in your head. Things can just, like, be the totally wrong thing in your head. And... It, it can really ruin some some of your your opportunities. So I, I feel like those out there that that have for some reason the thought that somebody doesn't like you or a group of people don't like you or whatever it is, keep stay open, stay open, and and until they give you a real reason to to show that they don't like you, assume that you're fine. And I think that always works better for me nowadays is just assume that everything's cool because everything probably is. Everything usually is cool. Um, and Bad Religion turned out to be great guys. Still really good friends with all of them. Don't really talk to Graffin. But um, but honestly, he probably thinks we're great. He probably thinks we're fine. <laughs> I hope. All right. Um, let's go to the next. Thanks, Luke. Hey, what's up, Mike? It's Joe from St. Petersburg, Florida. I was just calling because I just hung up my big screen TV and I was just thinking about the live streams. So I didn't know if you were going to do any more in the future. Yeah. Also, I my earliest memory of seeing you guys was in St. Pete at this little club called The Refuge, or also known as Joe Mocha's on. And um, you guys used to play St. Pete a lot. Um, so that little club, The Refuge, it uh, had this glass window, and it was like a 400-person limit uh, inside, and I couldn't get in, so I watched you guys through the glass on this little tiny stage, and um, that was a cool memory. And then you guys used to play at the State Theater down the road and at Janus Landing. But anyways, I was just wondering if you guys were going to play anymore in St. Petersburg. Um, most likely not. The most recent I saw you guys was in 2020 before the pandemic in Orlando, Florida with Five Iron Frenzy. That was my wife's first time seeing you guys and also first time going to a punk rock show. But anyways, I was just calling uh, to say that I really love your guys' band and uh, I've been following you since the beginning, uh, since Poconaccia and uh, you know, I'm the same age as you guys, 46 this year. Whoop, whoop. Anyways, um, just uh, hope you guys can come back to Florida again so I can see you guys live. But in the meantime, just looking forward to the new music you guys are getting ready to put out, hopefully soon. Um, but uh, I guess I'll talk to you later. Maybe I'll call in another time. I was hesitating to call because I get self-conscious but uh you know um you guys are awesome keep doing what you do all right have a good day bye joe man thank you so much for calling and i'm i'm glad that you actually did um please call again you know we'll talk about something else um man i, I remember that show at the refuge that was the first time we ever played in florida or st pete florida for that matter but um that was our first tour 1995 um Technically, we were main support for Blunderhead, but I feel like we were pretty much co-headlining at that point. It was pretty awesome, but uh, good times, good memories. St. Petersburg, always a place we love to play. And hey, honestly, 
never say never. We might come back. Uh, we would love to come back, and, and it could happen. We played, we played two nights in Calgary, um, Canada. You know, Calgary way up, and it's kind of a kind of middle of nowhere kind of town, and had a blast, and it was awesome. You know, so like we play off the beaten path now and again when we get the right deals done, and, and we can make it happen. So hey. We might, we might come to Orlando again next time. We might come to St. Pete. You just never know. Um, Janice Landing, we played there just dozens of times. I mean, we played there so many times. Um, I'm sure at, at some point we'll, we'll make it back. So, yeah, good times. State Theater, too. Like, I just remember there's so many, so many dicks drawn on the wall at the State Theater. So, excuse my language, parents, earmuffs out there, but... Seriously, like you go into the back dressing room and on the wall, it's all penises, just different styles of dicks drawn on the wall. And it's a masterpiece. It's a work of art, really. I mean, what are we, what are we talking about here? We're talking about punk rock clubs and, and bands playing and, and um, you know, some of the best artists are touring around the country in, in punk bands. All right. <laughs> Joe. Joe, man, the, that that image of you outside the refuge looking through the glass window at us play this tiny little 400 cap room. <laughs> it reminds me of, of Heard That Sound because Heard That Sound's written about being outside a show, you know, being uh, being listening through the door, listening through through the walls. And you kind of lived it. You know, you lived it before that song was even an inkling even close to an inkling, you know, so that's kind of a cool, a cool little thing you just mentioned. I appreciate that. Um, okay, let's get to, let's get to the next one. Thanks for calling, Joe. Please call again. Um, let me know. Live stream, by the way, you mentioned live stream. I wanted to mention, yes, we will do live streams again. Get your uh, TV uh, ready to go, get all set up. Um, I love seeing everybody's set, setups when they, they film themselves watching the the internet shows. Um, Between This World and the Next was was what we did before. I'm not sure if we're going to continue that theme or if we might move on and do a new theme or something, but we definitely will do more live streams in the future. Yes, I know I've said that. Obviously, we're working on new album as well, and we're working on this cover song. Um, it's called Unstoppable. And everybody's like, shouldn't that be out by now? You've been talking about it for weeks on the podcast. You were talking about it before Canada. Now Canada's done. Well, yes, it should be done, but it's not because there's there's artwork and there's videos and there's things to do that that are not just recording the song. So that's what we're working on. Please uh, stay excited about it, though, because it, it is a good, a really good song, and I wish I wrote it. I really do. It's so good. All right. Next, next. What's up, Mike? This is Nick from San Diego. You probably remember me. I was the one that got your guys' face tattooed on me in like the early 2000s before other people were doing that. You guys probably thought I was pretty weird. But in any case, you know, biggest fan in the world. Love you guys. I just have a question for you. A couple of years ago, maybe it was like a year or two ago, Yuri was on the podcast. And he said some things I was a little bit, I don't know, a little bit, rubbed me the wrong way. Uh, it, it, what he said, and I'm probably not explaining this right, but he said basically that he was, when he's out at shows and he's talking to people and he finds out that the people he's been talking to is a, is a fan, he, his response was, oh, you're that person. Almost as if it was like with disdain, like the way he felt about speaking with fans or... Maybe he felt awkward about it, or maybe he just doesn't like talking with fans, and he prefers to talk with people that are just kind of normal folk that have no emotional investment in the band. I don't know. But I, I just want to know if you can clarify, if you remember what I was talking about, and if Yuri does love his fans or not. In any case, still love you guys. Take care, man. Bye. Nick, thanks for calling in, man. Uh, that sounds weird. It sounds like maybe Yuri didn't do a good job explaining himself that day. I, I don't really remember what he said, honestly, like at this point, but, um, it doesn't sound like Yuri would, well, if we were at a show, isn't everybody a fan pretty much? Like, uh, we love, we love you guys. I mean, 
I, that sounds a little weird, and I and I appreciate you calling in because you should call us out on that if we were ever going to say something like that. Um, let's just assume Yuri was like on crack or like he probably just didn't mean to say it like he said it or like you know it sounded or something. But um, Yuri's a pretty chill dude, easy to talk to, doesn't mind talking to anybody. Honestly, like he's not he's not the kind of guy that. Um, that won't go out and talk to people like he, he will, you know, he, he does all the time. So yeah, it is kind of weird hearing that, but, uh, I, I think it's all, I think it's going to be okay. I think, um, I think it must've just been a misunderstanding, but, uh, cause quite frankly, you're asking, does Yuri like his fans? Yes, he does. Yes, he does. I'm going to, I'm going to have him back on to defend himself at some point. Um, yeah. And I'll ask him about that. Be like, Hey, what do you think about this, Yuri? Maybe I'll play your your um, your message for him, uh, Nick. Thank you, uh, but please, uh, if if Yuri is gonna be a jerk to people, I will get him whipped into shape. Don't you worry, okay? Keep him in line. All right, next caller. Hey, Mike. Tim from Lake Forest Park, Washington. Here. Since we're playing the game of does Mike really remember it or is it just BS? Do you remember that time in 2007 when I sold you and your wife chocolate-covered cherries at Pike Plates Market? And uh, how did they taste? Or there was that other time in 2006 when I interrupted you on the ferry to tell you that I was a big fan. How about that? Well, sorry about that one. You were writing something in your notebook, and it was probably pretty important, so sorry that I interrupted you there. Anyway, see ya. <laughs> Tim. Yeah, you know what? It's funny. I actually do remember buying cherries from you. Um, I can't quite make out your face in my mind, but I, I remember the scene. We're at Pike Place Market in Seattle, Washington, and there's this chocolate-covered cherry place that Holly, my wife, loves. And so she's like, let's get some of those, and let's get some extra ones for, you know, we were going to send them to a friend of ours or something like that. And yeah. It was great. It was a great day. So thanks for taking care of us. Uh, I do not remember you interrupting me riding on the ferry, but I've talked to a lot of people on the ferry, so it's not like a, it's not as, it's not as like, it doesn't stick out in my mind, you know, it's not as vivid of a memory. Um, but because I think the chocolate, ch chocolate covered cherry thing, I've never really done that except for that time. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. Nice. Real nice. All right. Thanks, Tim. Hey, Mike. My name is Jordan. I live in uh, South Carolina, man. I've been a long-time fan. been listening to you guys for probably 20 years now. It's not longer. Uh, one memory I have of you guys is like the three or four times I've seen you live. I actually saw you up in uh, Pittsburgh on one of the most random lineups I've ever seen. And why it stands out so much is because it was you guys, Kyoto, the color Fred, and Drop Dead Gorgeous. Hmm. Just the wildest array of uh, bands and artists that I've seen together, and it definitely stands out. One of the better shows that I've seen. Keep it up, man. Thank you for all the years and years of entertainment. Yeah, we did a lot of it. Thanks for calling, Jordan. Um, Pittsburgh, man. We, I remember that tour, Chiodos, Color Fred. Um, the Color Fred is Fred from from Taking Back Sunday. And he was he was not playing with Taking It Back Sunday at the time, and he started this other band, and they were on that tour, and and then yeah, Drop Dead Gorgeous. I don't really remember them much, but I definitely remember, obviously Chiodos. They were doing really well, um, kind of that emo screamo stuff, and I feel like MXPX was kind of just it was a weird time for us for sure. And, uh, I appreciate you having some great memories from it's like all eras get love, you know, all eras are important. It's important for us to like go through things to get, get to the other side and to, to find ourselves. So I, I, I feel like that tour was, uh, was an interesting one for us, but it wasn't, it wasn't bad at all. Actually, we, we got a lot of, a, a lot of fans from that tour, like that had people had never seen us before. So, kind of interesting but um yeah pittsburgh though always have a good time in pittsburgh it's a cool town it's uh you know a lot of a lot of punk rockers there you know it's home of anti-flag and and a bunch of other people so 
uh, homeless gospel choirs from there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good town. I, I enjoy it. Uh, let's do one more, you guys. Thank you so much. Um, it's been a blast. Please, if you want to call in, well, I'll talk about that in a minute. Let's get let's get uh, let's get one more done. Um, here we go. Hey, Mike. This is Shun from Japan. I saw you back in Milan, Italy, back in 2006, when you were touring with Real Big Fish, The Matches, and I'm the Avalanche. It was my first punk rock show, and I was blown away by all the bands, and I bought all the band CDs and got them signed by the band. I also saw you at Summer Sonic in Osaka, Japan, and I still have the 15-year anniversary t-shirt. So my question for the podcast is, I'd love to know if you have any fond memories from the European tour back in 2006 and on the Summer Sonic shows that you've done. Thanks, Mike, for making amazing music, also for the podcast, and I hope I'll be listening to music for the next 30 years. Thanks. Bye. Yeah, thanks for calling, man. Um, I'm thinking about Summer Sonic. I, I remember that tour in Europe you were talking about, 2006, with uh, the matches and... Yeah, it was great, all those guys. Um, but it was a long tour, and it all just kind of it blends a little bit for me. But going back to Summer Sonic in Japan, Summer Sonic's a big festival. It's a summer festival. It's kind of like their I, I I don't know what would be here. Like, uh, what's a big festival here? You know, that has everything. You know. Uh, Lollapalooza kind of has everything these days. No, um, Coachella, you know, that has rock and it has hip hop and pop and electronica and DJs. It has everything. So like that's Summer Sonic. It kind of has everything, right? Um, Black Eyed Peas headlining, you know, one one stage, you know, that kind of thing. Um, I think Fall Out Boy played right after us one year. That might be the year you saw us, the 15 years. But we... What stands out for me, there's, there's a, we played Summer Sonic twice, but the first time we played, um, Ichiro, Ichiro was a player on the Mar Seattle Mariners baseball team. He was a hitter. He was great. And he was an outfielder, but he was from to Tokyo. Um, and so I, he had just, I think he had just retired from, from the Seattle Mariners team. Or he either that or he had like hit some amazing amount of hits and they were going to the playoffs and things like that. Either way, I got an Ichiro jersey, Mariners jersey, wore it during the set, and I took it off and I threw it into the crowd, and the whole crowd was. Ah. I mean, this is a baseball stadium, full of people, literally like a huge stadium full of people, and then there's a stage at the end, and we're playing it. But um, Rancid, I think Rancid went on right after us uh, that day. And, um, man, that was just, it, it was fun. It was fun because back then it was so long ago. It was kind of, um, you know, we had played big places. But I think that that was one of the biggest stadiums we had ever played to that date, you know. Um, so it always sticks out in my mind. But the, the second time we played Summer Sonic when we... Uh, I think was our 15 year anniversary um, or around that year or whatever. Um, that was when Fall Out Boy went on right after us. But that was when Fergie was watching MXPX. And then after MXPX played, we were watching Fall Out Boy with Fergie standing next to us. And she's like, hey, guys, I love you. I love MXPX, blah, blah, blah. You guys are great. I've uh, been a fan for a long time. You know, so <clears throat> that was fun. We got a. We got invited to go see their shows, sit, you know, side stage for their show, Black Eyed Peas. And uh, we did. It was fun. It was a lot of fun. So it, it's interesting to see the production difference between something that MXPX does, a punk band, lights. Maybe we have, you know, we amps and lights and sound and all that. But, but it's a whole nother level with Black Eyed Peas. They've got all these. Every song has a different programming. It's all on tracks. It's all, you know. It's all programmed. It's all really, really well done. So that was kind of fun to see, see all that. You know, over the years, we've saw, I've seen, like, Metallica side stage. I've seen, like, a lot of, a lot of cool bands like that. Um, of course, you know, 
course, nowadays, you know, Blink-182, it's always fun to see them, you know, because they're such a, such a big band, you know, but still just a punk band like us. And um, so it's always fun to see just huge. I mean, I went to see um, Dixie Chicks, uh, you know, this is a long time ago now, but getting to see their production was awesome. They, they hid inside road cases. And I know a lot of people have done that since then, but they did it. They probably weren't the first to do it either, but I thought it was cool how the, there was three road cases being like pushed across the floor, ramp up the stage, onto the stage. And, and you don't see them get out of the cases or anything, but you're like, Oh, I bet that that's probably them. So <laughs> that was, that was kind of cool. Um, man, I saw, I saw a, uh, a video the other day of Post Malone, who I, I, I've met him, nice guy, but I'm, he probably doesn't know who I am at now, you know, probably forgot. But um, nice guy. So I hate to see him getting hurt. And the other day I saw a video of him. He like fell in a hole in the stage. There was a hole in the stage where like there's a, a, a platform that like comes up, you know, lifts up. Well, apparently the platform was down and he like stepped into the hole and fell with his chest onto the edge of the stage. And, oh, he was just like, probably just like got the wind knocked out of him. It probably hurt his rib really bad. Like, that's rough because I just remember, one, I, I've fallen down on stage a few times. Never really gotten super hurt. I've, I've, I've sprained my ankles a couple times. That's rough, um, especially doing what I do, jumping around. Uh <laughs> You don't want to be jumping around with sprained ankles, let me tell you. But uh, San Diego Fair, back in the day, this was like late 90s, I f somehow was just rocking out so hard. I lost I lost my balance. I got some vertigo. And then I, I fell into the barricade. So between the stage and the barricade is like basically a, a trough where, where security guards stand and people go once they, they they crowd surf and go into into that little area, and that's where I fell straight down. And I was about to hit my head on the cement ground when a security guard caught me just in time, and my head was like, "Shoot!" Close one, lifts me back up onto the stage. I'm like, "Whoa, what just happened?" <laughs> dodged a bullet on that one so yeah man I, I don't I don't like to see people getting hurt um performers audience members anything like that you know and and luckily um I think it went pretty it's been it's gone pretty well lately so knock on knock on wood over here um thank you guys for tuning in the podcast I'm done that's it let's finish this up um shout out to Bob McKnight for producing and editing and, and hooking hey, it Mike. up. Um, sorry, I think I pushed play on that again accidentally. Um, <laughs> anyway, <coughs> excuse me. Shout out to Bob McKnight. Check out his podcast, The Bob and Katie Show. Uh, last week I said, you know, it's all a bunch of butt stuff, but you guys are going to enjoy it anyway, right? <laughs> I don't know why I said that. Maybe because it's true. It's sort of true. It's not really actually true. But... Um, unstoppable we are working on it we're working on a video we're working on artwork we're working on just the whole plan in general and trying to get this done and of course we're we're still working on new album stuff we had to put a little bit of a way uh, of it away while we went and did the show and anytime we do shows it kind of like puts a little bit of a damper on new album stuff but it is going really well i'm really happy with how things are going and we'll uh yeah We'll let you know. All right. All right. That's it. Uh, MXPeaks.com, you guys. If you want to come see us, uh, we'll, be, we'll be in Chicago November 18th. That's a Friday night. House of Blues, Teenage Bottle Rocket will be with us. And then the next night, Saturday night, come ghost hunting with us at the Rave in Milwaukee, November 19th. Tickets available right now at MXPeaks.com. Please don't wait. Uh, Teenage Bottle Rocket will be with us that night as well. And that place is haunted. So shadow people... Eek. I'm not going to go looking and I'm not going to go anywhere necessarily like alone, but if I'm with some good friends, I'll go, I'll go looking for some ghosts. All right. <sighs> That's it. Uh, short week. I appreciate you guys. Um, until next time.
Peace.